inside june by zona gale this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org reading by matt perard inside june by zona gale the difficulty with a june day is that you never can get near enough to it this month comes within few houses and if you want it you must go out to it when you are within doors knowing that out of doors it is june the urge to be out there with it is resistless but though you wade in green steep in sun breast wind and glory in them all still the day itself eludes you it would seem in june that there should be a specific for the malady of being oneself so that one might get to be a june day outright however if one were oneself more and more might not one finally become a june day or something of this sort i am quoting as nearly as may be from the book of our youth your youth and mine always the book of youth will open at a page like this and occasionally it is as if we turned back and read there and made a path right away through the page this morning a rose-breasted grosbeak wakened me singing on a bough of box elder so close to my window that the splash of rose on his throat almost startled me it was as if i ought not to have been looking and to turn away from out of doors was like leaving someone who was saying something but as soon as i stepped into the day i perceived my old problem the difficulty with a june day is that you can never get near enough i stood for a little at the front gate trying soberly to solve the matter or i stood where the front gate should have been for in our midland american villages we have few fences or hedges and alas no stone walls though undoubtedly this lack comes from an insufficient regard for privacy yet this negative factor i am inclined to condone for the sake of the positive motive and this i conceive to be that we are wistful of more ample occupation than is commonly contrived by our fifty feet village lots and so we royally add to our yards the sidewalk and the planting space and the road and as much of our neighbor's lawn as our imagination can annex there seems to me to be in this a certain charming pathos as it were a survival in us of the time when we had only to name broad lands our own and to stay upon them in order to make them ours in very fact and now it is as if this serene pushing back of imaginary borders were in reality an appending a kind of spiritual taking up of a claim how do i get near to jim i admit that it is a question of the veriest idler but what a delightful company of these questions one can assemble as how to find one's way to a place that is the way it seems a way across a meadow how to meet enough people who hear what one says in just the way that one means it how to get back at will those fugitive moments when one almost knows what it is all about and with this question the field of the idler becomes the field of the wise man and indeed if one idles properly or rather if the proper person idles the two fields are not always on opposite sides of the road to idle is by no means merely to do nothing it is an avocation a calling away nay one should say a piping away to idle is to inhibit the body and to let the spirit keep on not every one can idle i know estimable people who frequently relax like chickens in the sun but i know only a few who use relaxation as a threshold and not as a goal and who idle until the hour yields its full blessing i wonder if to idle at adventure might not be the way to june so i went out on the six o'clock street in somewhat the spirit in which another might ride the greenwood 
almost immediately i had an encounter for i came on my neighbor in her garden not my neighbor who lives on the other side of me and who is a big and obvious deacon with a family of a great many light gowns but my neighbor she was watering her garden these water rules and regulations of the village are among its spells to look at the members of the water commission one would never suspect them of romance but if they have it not why have they named from five until nine o'clock the only morning hours when one may use the city water for one's lawn and garden i insist that it cannot be a mere regard for the municipal resources and that the commissioners must see something of the romance of getting up before five o'clock to drench one's garden and are providing for the special educational value of such a custom or if i do not believe this i wish very much that i did with the proper grounds to tell the truth however i do not credit even my neighbor with feeling the romance of the hour and of her occupation she is a still woman of more than forty who does not feel a difference between her flower and her vegetable gardens but regards them both as a part of her life in the kind of car-window indifference and complacency of certain travellers she raises foxgloves and parsley and the sun shines over all i must note a strange impression which my neighbour gives me she has always for me an air of personal impermanence i have the fancy amounting to a sensation that she is where she is for just a moment and that she must rush back and be at it again i do not know at what but whether i see her in church or at a festival i have always all i can do to resist saying to her how did you get away it was so that she was watering her flowers as if she were intending at any moment to hurry off to get breakfast or put up the hammock or mend and yet before she did so she told me who was a willing listener a motion or two of the spirit of the village there is i observe a nicety of etiquette here about the not quite news not quite gossip shared with strangers and semi-strangers the rules seem to be strangers shall be told only the pleasant occurrences and conditions half strangers may discuss the unpleasant matters which they themselves have somehow heard but only pleasant matters may be added by accretion the rest of society may say whatever it has a mind but this mind as i believe is not harsh since nobody ever gossips except to people who gossip back miss toplady told me last night that calliope marsh is coming home for the java entertainment next week my neighbor imparted first and this was the best news that she could have given me it has been a great regret to me that this summer calliope is not in the village she has gone to the city to nurse some distant kinswoman more lonely than she and until ill health came long forgetful of calliope but she is to come back now and again to this and to that for the village interests are all her own i have never known any one in whom the tribal sense is so persistently alive as in calliope i asked my neighbor what this java entertainment would be which was to give back calliope and she looked her amazement that i did not know it would be it appeared one of those great fairs which the missionary society is always projecting and carrying magnificently forward it's awful feet aching work said my neighbor reflectively but honestly calliope seems to like it i don't know but i do too the sodality meant to have one when they set out to pave daphne street but it turned out it wasn't needed well big affairs like that makes it seem as if we'd been born into the whole world and not just into friendship village my neighbor told me that a new public library had been opened in a corner of the post office store and that a great crowd was drawing books though for this she herself cannot vouch since the library is only open saturday evenings and saturday she says with decision 
is a bad night it is in fact i note very difficult to find a free night in the village save only tuesday monday because of its obvious duties and incident fatigue is as impossible as sunday wednesday is club day thursday is prayer meeting friday is sacred to church suppers and entertainments and the ladies aid society and saturday is invariably denominated a bad night and omitted without question we are remote from society but tuesday is literally our only free evening of course it won't be the same with the you about books my neighbor admits you can send your girl down to get a book for you but i have to be home to get out the clean clothes how's your girl going to like the country she asked i am to have here in the village i find many a rebuke for habits of mine which lag behind my theories for though i try to solve my share of a tragic question by giving to my swedish maid elfa the self-respect and the privilege suited to a human being dependent on me together with ways of comfort and some leisure yet i find the homely customs of the place to have accomplished more than my careful system and though when i took her from town i scrupulously added to the earnings of my little maid i confess that it had not occurred to me to wonder whether or not she would like friendship village we seem so weary far from the conditions which we so facilely conceive especially i seem far i am afraid that i engaged elfa in the first place with less attention to her economic fitness than that she is so trim and still and wistful with such a peculiarly winning upward look and that her name is elfa i told my neighbor that i did not know yet whether elfa would like it here or not and for refuge i found fault with the worms on the rose bushes also i made a note in my head to ask elfa how she likes the country but the spirit of a thing is flown when you make a note of it in your head how does elfa like the town for that matter i never have asked her this either she'll be getting married on your hands anyway my neighbor observed the ladies here say that's one trouble with trying to keep a hired girl they will get married but i say let em at least here is a matter in which my theory like that of my neighbors outruns those of certain folk of both town and village for i myself have heard women complain of their servants marrying and establishing families and deplore this short-sightedness in not staying where there is a good home a nice room plenty to eat and all the flat pieces sent to the laundry speaking of books said my neighbor have you seen nicholas moore i see almost no new books i told her guiltily me either she said i don't mean he's a book he's a boy nicholas moore that does a little writing himself i guess you will see him he'll be bringing some of his writing up to show you he took some to the new school principal i heard and to the invalid that was here from the city he seems to be sort of lonesome though he has got a good position he's interested in celluloid and he rings the catholic bell nicholas must be near thirty but he hasn't even showed any signs signs i hazarded of being in love she said simply and i have pondered pleasantly on this significant ellipsis of hers which takes serenely for granted the basic business of the world her elation reminds me of the delicate animism of the japanese which says when the rice pot speaks with a human voice then the demon's name is kanjo one can appraise a race or an individual by the class of things which speech takes for granted love or a demon or whatever it be and apropos of showing signs do i remember leva bessie and timothy toplady jr i am forced to confess that i remember neither i recall to be sure that the top ladies had a son but i had thought of him as a kind of qualifying clause and it is difficult to conceive of him as the subject of a new sentence when i hear of leva bessie 
i get her confused with a pink gingham apron and a pail of buttermilk which used sometimes to pass my house with leva combined fancy that pink gingham and that pail becoming a person and my neighbor tells me that the qualifying clause and the pink gingham are keeping company and perhaps are to determine the cut of indeterminate clauses and aprons world without end the young folks will couple off says my neighbor and she adds in a manner of spontaneous impression i think it's nice and it's nice for the whole family too i've seen families that wouldn't ever have looked at each other come to be real friends and able to see the angels in each other just by the young folks pairing off this whole town's married criss-cross and kittering family into family i like it it kind of binds the soil my neighbor told me of other matters current in the village pleasant commonplaces having for her the living spirit which the commonplace holds in hostage i'm breathing little child soberly announced to me that first day of our acquaintance and i wonder why i smiled my neighbor slowly crossed her garden and i followed on the walk these informal colloquies of no mean length are perfectly usual in the village and they do not carry the necessity for an invitation within the house or the implication of a call the relations of hostess and guest seem simply to be suspended and we talk with the freedom of spirits met in air is this not in its way prophetic of the time when we shall meet burdened of no conventions or upholstery or perhaps even words and their talk with the very freedom of villagers meanwhile i am content with conventions and passive amid upholstery but i do catch myself looking forward suddenly my neighbor turned to me with such a startled inquiring manner that i sent my attention out as at an alarm to see what she meant and then i heard what i had not before noted a thin wavering line of singing that had begun in the street beyond our houses and now floated inconsequently to us lifting dipping wandering i could even hear the absurd words my mary and mary what you mean i never know you don't make me merry very but you make me sorry oh the o oh, prolonged undulatory exploring the air to say something was like interrupting my neighbor's expression so i waited and it's old carrie she explained briefly when he does that it's like something hurts you ain't it i thought that this would be no one of my acquaintance and i said so but tentatively lest i should be forgetting some inherent figure of the village he's come here in the year she explained and save about the obvious import of old carrie's maudlin song she maintained that fine tribal reticence of hers except for the drinking she even said he seems to be a quiet nice man but it's a shame for peter's sake peter carrie she added like a challenge is the brainiest young man in this town say what you want on which she told me something of this young superintendent of the cannon battery who has tried it in nebraska and could not bear to leave his father here this way and has just returned he works hard and plays the violin and is making a man of himself generally she told me don't miss him and i have promised that i will try not to miss peter carey they went out towards the cemetery way she added him and his father all alone peter will be along by here in a minute on his way to work it's most quarter too i set my husband down to his breakfast and got up his lunch before i come out i don't have my breakfast till the men folks get out of the way i never cease to marvel at these splendid capabilities which prepare breakfasts put up lunches turn the attention to the garden and all so to speak with the left hand ready at any moment to enter upon the real business of life to minister to the sick or bury the dead or conduct a town meeting or church supper or a birth they have a kind of goddess-like competence these women at any of these offices they arrive 
lacking the cloud it is true but magnificently equipped to settle the occasion in crises of say deafness they will clap a hot pancake on a friend's ear with an esculapian savoir-faire for their efficiencies combine those of lost generations with all that they hear of in this in an open-minded eclecticism with puritans and foresters and courtiers in our blood who knows but that we have too the lingering ichor of gods and goddesses oh don't you wish you had what a charming peculiarity it would be to be descended from a state of immortality as well as to be preparing for it nay even now to be entered upon it in a few moments after that piteous fuddled song had died away on the other street peter carey came by my neighbor's house he was a splendid muscular figure in a neutral belted shirt and a hat battered quite to college exactions though i am sure that peter did not know that i could well believe that he was making a man of himself i have temerity to say that this boy superintendent of a canning factory looked as in another milieu shelley might have looked but so it was it was not the first time that i have seen in such an one the look the eyes with the vision and the shadow i have seen it in the face of a man who stood on a step-ladder papering a wall i have seen it in a mason who looked up from the foundation that he mortared i have seen it often and often in the faces of men who tilled the soil i was not surprised to know that peter carey took on the violin the violin is a way out for that look in one's eyes as for nicholas moore i have no doubt is the ringing of the catholic bell and i am not prepared to say that celluloid and wallpaper and mortar and meadows and canneries run under good conditions may not be a way out as well at all events the look was still in peter's face peter glanced briefly at my neighbor running the risk of finding us both looking at him realized the worst blushed a man's brown blush and nodded and smiled after he had looked away from us you see this grass said my neighbor peter keeps it cut my husband don't get home till so late we're awfully fond of peter there is no more tender eulogy and i would rather have that said of me in the village than in any place i know no grace of manner or dress or mind can deceive anybody they are fond of you or they are not and i would trust their reasons for either my neighbor's husband came up the front door at that moment and he and peter without greeting went on together her husband did not look toward us because in the village it seems not to be a husband and wife ceremonial to say good-bye in the morning i often fall wondering how it is in other places is it possible that men in general go away to work without the consciousness of family of themselves as going forth on the common quest is it possible that women see them go and are so unaware of the wonder of material life that they do not instance it in at least good-bye one would think that even the female bear in the back of the cave must growl out something simple when her lord leaves her in the hope of a good kill and when the two men had turned down the brick walk the maple leaves making a come and go of shadows and sun patterns on their backs my neighbor looked at me with a smile or say with two-thirds of a smile as if her vote to smile were unanimous but she were unwilling by it to impart too much it's all miggy with peter she said as if she were mentioning a symptom miggy i said with interest and found myself nodding to this new relationship as to a new acquaintance and i was once more struck with the precision with which certain simple people and nearly all great people discard the particularities and lay bare their truths could any amount of elegant phrasing so reach the heart of the thing and show it beating as did it's all miggy with peter yes my neighbor told me it's been her with him ever since he come here 
assuredly i thought the better of mickey for this and is it all peter with mickey i inquired with some eagerness land knows my neighbor thought and handed me the hose to hold while she turned off the water at the hydrant i remember that a young robin tried to alight on the curving spray just as the water failed and drooped i'd like to get a joke on a robin that way said my neighbor and laughed out in a kind of pleasant fellowship with jokes in general and especially with robins it made maggie's little sister laugh so the other day when that happened she added then she glanced over at me with a look in her face that i have not seen there before land she said this is the time of day after my husband goes off in the morning when i wish i had a little young thing running round now almost more than at night well i don't know both times i nodded without saying anything my eyes on the golden robin prospecting vainly among the green mulberries i wish that i were of those who know what to say when a door is open like this to some shut place well said my neighbor now i'll bake up the rest of the batter want a paint thus tacitly excused how true her instinct was courteously to put the three fringed pinks in my hand to palliate her leaving i have come back to my house and my own breakfast elpha said i first thing do you think you are going to like the country my little maid turned to me with her winning upward look no one she shocked me by saying and there was another door opened into another shut place and i did not know what to say to that either but i am near to my neighbor and in a manner to which elpha's trimness and wistfulness never have impressed me near to elpha herself and i am near near to the village as i left the outdoors just now all the street was alive with men and girls going to work women opening windows a wagon or two in from a caledonia farm a general universal not to say cosmic air of activity and coffee all the little houses set close together up and down the street were like a friendly porch party on a long narrow veranda where folks sit knee to knee with an avenue between for the ice cream to be handed all the little lawns and gardens were disposed like soft green skirts delicately embroidered fragrant flowing as i looked it seemed to me that i could hear the faint hum of the village talk in every house the intimate revealing confidences of the family quick with hope or anxiety or humor or passion animated by its common need to live and along the street flooded the sun akin to the morning quickening in many a heart the day has become charged for me with something besides daylight something which no less than daylight pervades illumines comes to meet me at a thousand points i wonder if it can be that unaware i did get near to june End of inside june by zona gale